Um, I was actually in um, banking, so I was in asset management at um, EcoBank Capital. You were in banking and you started to enter into coffee farming? <laughs> yes. Yay. Yes. That's incredible, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can you eat this raw? Um, okay, so because they're unwashed, I wouldn't um, advise no, it. No, don't worry. I'm from the village. <laughs> they're they're really there. sweet, actually. It's just like cocoa? Um, well... In terms of the fact that it has a sweet um, 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 pulp, okay. then yes. But of course... I know, I know coffee is bitter, so... Uh, coffee is bitter after it's been roasted. So that's the actual seed that you're seed. tasting. But as you can see here, if you um, just pop it open, the pulp in here, right? Ooh. And the uh, membrane around the seed, it's all sweet. Even the husk is sweet as well. Really? High sugar content. Can you not see that some of these, um, when we were picking the uh, coffee, I told you to be careful for the ants mm. because they love this. It's sweet. Yeah. It's just like eating the cocoa bean. <laughs> you know, you, but make sure you don't swallow. Yes, of course. Mm. And don't eat too much of it as well. <laughs> Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'm back again with another video. Let me tell you something. I was born and raised in Ghana, but I never knew that Ghana grows coffee. Shame on me. Let me know if you are Ghanaian out there. Did you know that Ghana grows coffee? Oh my goodness. All I knew was cocoa. So, you know, I uploaded a video when I went to Kenya. I went to a coffee farm for the first time and people were like, you mean this is your first time of seeing a coffee bean? I was like, yes. You know what? I thank God so much for Africa to the world because it's exposing me to certain things that I never knew that it exists. I was amazed of seeing a coffee bean for the first time. So somebody left a comment on my video and told me that, hey Maya, whenever you come to Ghana, I will take you to a coffee farm. I got to Ghana and this guy introduced me to his friend and his friend have a coffee farm. So he came to pick me up from Accra. We drive through the beautiful Ebri Mountains and then we go to Equiapim, which is in the Eastern region of Ghana. Such a beautiful place. I think I'm a big fan of mountains. We took a tricycle in Ghana, they call it Aboboya on this beautiful road. And then we switched to an untied road. Man, it was so bumpy and scary. But thank God, we arrived at our destination. And where this guy took me, you see this building that you're seeing on your screen, it has been in existence for over 150 years. And this is where this guy is growing his coffee. And you know what we always do? I'm here to learn so i need to speak to him and he is going to let us know that it's possible to grow coffee in ghana come with me let's talk to this amazing young gentleman i hear maya yeah Bro. you know i never knew coffee they grow coffee in ghana yeah 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 we do we do how <laughs> you know you know the um actually coffee has been grown in ghana for a long time Long, 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 long time. It's the only issue is that coffee has been um, uh, Coco's, uh, let's say, neglected cousin. Right? Neglected cousin. That is <laughs> yes. why I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly, Whoa. exactly. So over um, re in recent years, efforts are now being made to um, uh, look at the uh, coffee sector in and of itself as a uh, a source of also um, as a source of income as well for. Um, the country, of course, so we is don't it, rely so it, heavily this, on cocoa. Is special places that they grow coffee in Ghana? Yes, yes, yes. Um, coffee loves mountains. Oh. You know, coffee loves altitude. Okay. Mm. So altitude, cool climates, oh, that's, it's, it's just what coffee needs. Now I understand why I can only find coffee in Equiapim. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just in Equiapim, actually. Really? Yes. Um, Coffee actually grows. We have some in um, Brongahafo, we have some in Kweu, we have some in the Volta. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, so what's what's special about the Equapim area is because it is actually... Um, so since 
basically colonial times mm. when the missionaries were around. Mm -hmm. Coffee hasn't really been um, explored so deeply. It hasn't been cultivated to any um, serious extent in this um, area. So we are kind of um, reigniting the sector here and um, basically trying to install once and for all the complete value chain here because we believe that um, it, it's, it's effectively a great source of... Um, uh, 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 it's a great um, uh, commercial driver for um, a development as well as um, uh, a socio-economic change. Let me know, how many acres have you grown so far? Okay, so um, currently, uh -huh. as um, you know, we are the Equipim Coffee Growers Association. We have an oh, association, have association of association. Yeah, 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 we do. How many people are you in the association? Wow, look, so overall we're probably around a hundred farmers, but this is a consolidation of different kinds of people okay. who play different roles. Oh, okay. So it's like uh, anybody involved in the coffee sector at all, based in the equipping uh, area. Hmm. So even if you're a processor, you're a farmer, you're an investor, you're all involved, you know, you're all um, a members of the association. So okay. close to a hundred people overall. All right, so how many acres do you guys have right now? Um, around... So approximately between um, uh, 85 to about 102 acres at the moment. So we're mapping currently so that we can get the um, uh, cultivated lands more accurately. You know, this is one of the challenges that we are facing. Where, you, you took me to a place where you said um, this place has been in existence for over 150 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that was your first farm? Uh, actually, that was the first farm that um, I've ever cultivated. Okay. Um, that is actually a, one of my ancestors' village, um, uh, Nana Kwamfori, who was the uh, former Okwapehene. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a long, 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 long time ago. So effectively, he died, and um, the place has kind of deteriorated since then, right? Mm -hmm. So effectively, um, I see or saw it then as the perfect opportunity to... Um, explore what it is that we are preaching you know a proof of concept mm. to show that indeed coffee can be used as a um, driver for um, rural development and socio-economic change right mm. so as you can see today um, we did have to take um, uh, uh, Boboya. Boboya. <laughs> but um, there's actually a path there now okay. initially there was no road to this um, route so it's because of your coffee farm over there correct that's why correct Correct, correct. So, for example, um, just a couple of days ago, we had tourists coming in from the African American um, Association, right? Mm. So, basically, the influx of tourists, the um, harvest period, um, generally, uh, it's 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 going to push infrastructure, right? Because the more people are are coming there, the more there's an even a financial incentive to be able to uh, to install such um, uh, structures, you know. You know, you're not even telling me what your name is because your friend introduced you to me. Uh, please, can you tell me your name and where you're from? Uh, okay, so um, my full name, per my passport, <laughs> is uh, John Nana Ado Francois. Okay. Yes, that's my full name. Born and raised in Ghana. Correct, born and raised in Ghana. Okay. So. You became a banker. Um, well, actually, I, I, I started out in um, asset management at... Okay. Um, Akuban Capital. Okay. Um, and then, of course, I uh, stopped to delve into some research into the um, coffee sector. Mm -hmm. um, I got support from um, family to engage in these um, uh, 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 researches around um, the world. In Tanzania, I was in uh, Singapore. I went all the way to um, uh, Bali in Indonesia as well to explore uh, different coffee sectors and different niches that... Um, uh, people are uh, using to kind of drive the um, uh, uh, their um, coffee um, initiatives. Um, so I started research maybe somewhere in 2013. Okay. Um, by 2015, I was kind of ready to um, go. And that's when um, I first registered the um, Asili Coffee Purveyors Company. Yes, so we got our first um, warehouse in um, uh, Doma Hinkru, actually. Yes, um, we were then um, exploring the trade of the um, coffee. So that's when I had my um, cocoa board license, actually. Because, you know, you need to be licensed to actually buy and trade coffee in um, Ghana. What has been the major challenge 
for this type of farming in Ghana because I know cocoa will have a lot of support. What about coffee? What is the major challenge that you face in this farming? Um, uh, coffee, the, 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 the problem I have faced has been um, kind of twofold. Um, coffee in and of itself, as it's been um, a neglected crop, yeah. it's been difficult to get um, traction, okay. you know. But um, secondly as well, the last time coffee was cultivated here, it was years ago in colonial times, actually. That's in the Equapim area. Um, on my mother's side, actually, uh, one of our ancestors, J.S. Martinson, was planting in Ahabanting. And I believe that um, the uh, missionaries were also planting the same. That's the Presbyterian tra uh, Training College, okay. also planting then. But since then, no one has really um, uh, explored the sector. So we are now pioneering a shift, you know, mm. and um, we are doing so in totality. So we are effectively installing the complete value chain. Mm. So we are trying to get the coffee all the way from ground to finished product into cup immediately. So you mean you grow and process coffee right here? Yes, now we do. Now we do. To finish product? Now we do, yes. Now we do. Can you take me to where you do that? Of course I can. Oh my goodness, but I, I just like how this um, coffee looks like, which means when it, it, it's green from the beginning, yes, and it becomes red. Yes, correct. And this white is the... That's the, the flower. Oh, before it shows up, yeah? Of course. And as you can see here, have a look at this. Okay. You notice that um, some of the beans are green yeah. and others are uh, red, yeah. right? So coffee doesn't naturally um, uh, uh, ripen yeah. at once. Okay. Yes. One so it has to be gradually picked through if you want to maintain your quality levels. Of course, if it's just commercial, then a lot of um, um, uh, uh, farmers just basically pull it all out with both the ripe and the unripe cherries but this harms your quality mm. yes the final cup quality is uh, affected take me where you process the coffee will really do will do will do thank you will do welcome welcome thank you whoa it smells yes. good in here thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you hi man you got beautiful women plus coffee <laughs> hi how, how are you doing Good. Bro, he told me that it's going to be my first time, I mean, from raw material to final coffee. Sure. So please, I'm giving this to you. Will I be able to get my coffee before I get out of here? Yes, you can be able to get your coffee. Thank Not you. Not this one. Oh. This one is fresh and it has to go through a lot of processing before you get your final product like this one. Yes. How long does it take before you get this one? Uh -huh. Roughly like a week. A week? Or two, yes. A week or two. And what happens to this one? So this is now processed in the roaster. Okay. And that's when you get the brown coffee beans that are then ground and packaged into your finished products. You mean this? That's actually the stuff you drink. This is coffee. Now I understand why coffee is bitter. Ah, exactly. So what process? Is this the final process or something? So basically it's now cooling. So okay. what happens is that um, after the post-harvest um, um, uh, methods are applied to the red cherries that you had before, we get them in the green bean form. It then goes through into the hopper, it goes into the roaster, and then after we've gotten the desired um, roast profile, it's released here. Now, when it gets here, it's really hot. Sometimes bean temperature can be between 207 to 230 um, degrees Celsius. So what you're seeing now is, it's currently being um, spread around by this turbine, and there's also a lot of um, uh, air that's blown from um, underneath to help to cool the beans. This is incredible, man. Mm -hmm. From mm -hmm. the raw material, to the finished product. Finished product. Will I be able to get one and take it home? You'll get two. Two? <laughs> <laughs> Ask for one, get one free. Exactly. Uh, which means that this is the coffee beans. Do you guys grind it? Because some of the coffees are grinded. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we actually have a packaging station where um, uh, we have the coffee ground through a grinder and then it's packaged and then it's sealed and then it's ready for market. 
I want to ask you a question which has nothing to do with corporate. Sure. I, I want to know corporate work or entrepreneurship. Um, so originally I was in Ecobank. Um, I was at um, Ecobank Capital in uh, asset management. Um, that was good, but um, see, I prefer the level of impact that um, the work I'm doing now has. So I've always, I mean, I'll, I'll always be um, an entrepreneur at uh, heart, if I've answered your question. Yeah. Um, will you encourage more African youth to enter entrepreneurship? Um, so what I can do is um, say yes, if you have the right ideas, and you have the um, right tools to deliver, um, then yeah, for sure, get into it. It's not easy, but um, I mean, it's, 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 it's the future, right? Mm. It's the future. And um, uh, it's, it's entrepreneurship is the um, basis of a lot of um, uh, uh, companies, or the genesis of a lot of um, uh, companies. You know, after a while, it's of course corporatized underneath the original um, founder, but um, so for us to progress more, we need a lot of this. You know, we need a lot of entrepreneurs. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, or in Ghana, what would it be? To be honest with you, uh, I'll say maybe Africa, rather than, because um, it's not a problem that's isolated to um, only Ghana. Um, I wish that um, we could uh, kind of accelerate the, um, uh, our um, gap with uh, the West, for example, in terms of our um, structures, our structures and systems. Because we're all fairly young nations on the continent, uh, we still have a ways to go in terms of developing our infrastructure, um, putting together our systems, etc. And this um, long growth period, of course, um, kind of it means that um, a lot of the time there are structural um, issues where um, great ideas cannot always fit with, um, uh, 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 cannot always be effectively executed on continent because of this um, uh, structural um, uh, uh, gap. Mm. You know, so if I could do anything, I would just accelerate our growth period. You know, but then again, they say. Slow growth leads to character building. So what can we say? Uh, are we selling the coffee? Oh, I can see selling it, eh? Hi. Are you selling the coffee? I wanted to, you told me it's giving me one, but uh, I have so many people watching us right now. Um, I don't know how to sell this coffee today. Should I put a number on the screen so that people can order? No. Yes, of course, of course, you should. And how many can you produce in a month? Um, we can do about two or three tons fairly easily. That's maybe five, ten thousand bags like these we can do monthly without uh, a problem. You go for wholesale, right? Yes, of course, we go for wholesale. And of course, um, as I mentioned to you earlier on, um, we are developing um, the final products for the Equapim areas because, as I uh, told you before, our first harvest in the Equapim area is this year. So we will soon be taking our um, raw materials from the Equapim area only to um, the various um, state institutions for analysis and registrations and um, uh, 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 distribution on the um, local market. So if you're watching this video and you want to order the coffee, let me know. I'm going to sell this coffee myself because I think he's not ready to sell his own product right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so reach out to me. And then let's support a brother's business. It's by force, as we always know. Order in large quantities. And you can also be like a supplier. You know, you buy from them and then supply to other people. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with me, seeing coffee for the first time. And you know how we always do it. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much for talking to me.